And as the breath begins to even out, you will notice that the thought patterns begin to change. So for someone that's really, let's say they're, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> the rising going on, they're, they're in their head, the thoughts going on all the time, they're having trouble to get into their body. What would you say is um, the first, like a good place for them to start to have that experience? Especially if a person have a monkey mind. Yeah. Right, where we're walking around to here, to there, to there. The first thing you have to tell yourself is that you're shopping or whatever you need to do, it'll still be there in a few minutes when you finish a session. It'll still be there. You, you, tell, you tell your conscious mind, you have, have to kind of like beat it with a stick in a very gentle way. Yes. <laughs> but then, then you have to tell yourself, that you're going to take your attention and just begin to breathe. We're going to make the breath even. Five seconds in, five seconds out, or ten, or whatever, or three, whatever your length is. And this can change as we go on in time. Uh, and we want to allow that. And in the very beginning of the meditation, in the, in the old way, they would say, you know, close your eyes, make a blackboard over here, and put down number one after one in and out breath, and number two after that, etc. So you could begin by counting the breaths. This is a very preliminary beginning manner. Yes. But the idea is for someone with no experience, this begins to even out the breath. And as the breath begins to even out, you will notice that the thought patterns begin to change. Yes. They begin to slow down and they begin to become a little less invasive if, if things have been like closing in on you thought wise. Yes. So you eventually want to be able to, the thoughts don't actually go away, but our conscious awareness of them does. So the thoughts eventually, we are able to kind of, in a sense, keep them at a peripheral area here. But our, while our consciousness is focused more deeply inside ourselves, and so we have the effect that the thought patterns disappear. Yes. Now, but with enough work on the subconscious, I have to say this over years and years and years, that you're resolving a lot of issues that come up because that's one thing that will happen in standing meditation. Certain emotions may come out of the blue, or certain feelings, uncomfortable, odd, weird, or very, very pleasant. And all these things are part of the process. And one has to be able to be like the person on a riverbank. And let's say going down the Nile, the barges are going down the Nile, nice and slow. Eventually, your thoughts are like that. And or these are already maybe an experience, an emotional experience. Yes. You do not try to fight them, but you do not hold on to them. You let them pass through you and move on. Yes. Eventually, you're able to transfer most of your awareness into your sense of feeling, what I call feeling awareness. And this feeling awareness is our road in deeper and deeper inside the body. And you're talking about the fascial layer, and of course we have the skin and the muscles above that, well, the muscles are rough, roughly in the same area of the fascia. Yes. But then, but then as you become more sensitive, of course, as you have, then you become aware of the places where the muscles attach to the bone, and then the tendons and ligaments. Yes. That includes in the spine. And then later, you, you, have, you can become aware of these very, very deep muscles inside the body, like the ones lying the inside of the spine, for instance. But go beyond that. Eventually, you can begin to sense, although I'll bite very subtly at first, the actual organs themselves. Yes. And then beyond that, it's said that uh, with enough practice, you're supposed to be able to sense the glands. And, of course, this is now becoming alchemy because uh, a lot of this stuff... Uh, in the Taoist practices, is bringing the energy through the brain and, and like that. Uh, but the idea that this transformational process, energetically and physically, so you have a couple of, and then you could say mental too. So a physical process, the muscles become more and more relaxed, begin to feel connecting, usually the upper body first then usually the lower body, and then the midriff, usually the chi belt area, and, and the waist is usually the last to join in to become one, one big piece. So eventually, when you relax your body in a standing position, everything drops out under your feet. Yes. And your, your feet are at a benchmark. Because when you first start this exercise, then you're going to feel some places in the feet have a lot of pressure, some don't have so much. Ideally, we want everything to be relatively equal. 
Yes. And, and when that happens, you begin to get this feeling of suction or joining with earth or the ground or whatever you're standing on, whatever that is. And then that's where one's idea of the root begins to occur. And it's like I've been watching the Olympics, right? And then the gymnasts, when they do the ball and they can do all these fancy things in the air and then land and then they call stick it, right? Yes. Mean like, like a suction almost when they do a perfect one. It's just like their feet are there, they're glued to the ground. And this is actually their being able to put a root down and make it work. Yeah. Not so easy for, you know, all these twists and turns. <laughs> and, you know. For us as normal folks, then. The idea of just standing still and being able to relax our energy such that we feel it go down and relatively equally in all the places of the feet. Usually what develops with that part of it is that the first half of the foot, the front half, the uh, the, the plantar uh, arch and, and then, you know, the, the Yung Chuan bubbling well point and, and then all the toes begin to have more control first because as human beings we are always kind of moving forward so our awareness is pretty much in the, in the front. front of our body yes and take some time to begin to become aware of the back part which is there all along you've been coming along for the ride <laughs> unbeknownst to us for a long time but it's that way and i'm going to digress for a second because that's the time when we do walking the walking exercise whether you do the bagua sliding step or the tai chi heel to toe Yes. The important thing is not the forward motion so much, that's important too, but to be able to walk. Yes. Walk backwards begins to create the opposite effect physically of what happens when we walk forward. When we walk forward, let's say, and I'm exaggerating, my chest sticks out and my back kind of folds inside. But when we walk backwards, we round the back outward almost like a barrel. Yes. Which is eventually what we want to feel like when we're standing. It's all this big round thing. And you have sensations of, of, of cylindrical energy before usually the spherical energy occurs. Yes. But anyway, uh, so I digress there. No, that's so that's maybe. great. Yeah. So it's um, there was there's so many wonderful gems in there, and I think um, for most people um, who are particularly looking to heal their body, whether it's of injuries and um, or even just improve performance, you know, like you were saying with uh, more dynamic um, movement pursuits like gymnastics and all that sort of thing. We first need to really address this to be able to start to sink the consciousness into and be able to feel the body at progressively deeper levels.